there's a hazard when a deer runs around inside the airport area. Here, trying to sound as loud as you can to scare him. Oh, oh! Go! <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> Last week on Playing With Fire, Harvey's crew boss, Ariel, was put to the test on the chainsaw. Having that certificate gives me like uh, another confidence boost. And in cold spring rain, Garrett was testing his crew's resolve. Just like that. <laughs> Good job, team. Yeah. yeah. The long winter and unusually high water levels this season have the crews still waiting for fires. I'm here sending to go strangle. But they're still training at a high level to make sure they're in shape for the summer ahead. Forest fires are intense, and so is the fire ranger training. Today, Harvey Bunting has his crew working on pump setup. We're gonna have a uh, time trial, and then we'll go rock, scissors, paper for whoever goes through. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready? Yep. Set, go. Oh, I'm curious how long <laughs> yeah. this is gonna take him. He's slowing down because he just ate. Coming up to a minute. Oh man, that took no time at all. <laughs> 136. Nice. That's the time to beat. <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. Go. Go, Jordan. Oh, he's prepping. He's prepping. Oh, 120. Come on, man, get it started. 130. Damn. You beat the crew leader. 134. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Gets it done. Oh, wow. I'm up. You're up. I'm up. Go. Oh, that was nice and smooth, eh? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Gloves are too big. <laughs> oh, yes. Eating up that time. Let's go. <laughs> Coming up to a minute. I forgot to take the choke off. Well, I stopped timing when you first got water. You got 134. 134. <laughs> I know, what the that heck? That should be like plus five seconds there. <laughs> yeah, come on. Ready? Uh, you got this. Yeah, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready? Yeah. Go. You're gonna beat us. So I pay to go last, boys. <laughs> no cheering. <laughs> oh no, you're stripping it. Shut up. <laughs> 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 that was 
145. Kept her going. <laughs> 116. You beat her. Nice. <laughs> That's a little bit of girl power right there. OK, guys, good job. Let's go. I'll grab the pump. I got to start, right, guys. I got the intake. <laughs> Good practice, yeah. eh? Yeah, for sure. Fun, man. Learned a couple of things. Do that, cool. and then Morgan's gonna do the chainsaw. And then while she's doing the chainsaw, Mark has to do your radio check. We're on yellow alert, which means that we're the second crew out. It's supposed to be 30 minutes from the time they tell you to go until you're on your way. We have all of our initial attack equipment and then everything that we'd need for 19 days. And they've also got to ensure the boat is in good operating condition. and making sure the boat is working is not the worst job on the Sioux Lookout base. In Kenora, the crews are going over different situations that they may encounter this summer. This time, it's the possibility of using a porta tank. If the water gets too low, the intake, if you don't have it tied off, it could actually slip out. Just do a simple basic knot, just keep it in, in place. If it's higher than your fire, gravity will feed it down properly. And they utilize that a lot. They use it a lot, BC, Alberta, because they have the height. It drains all by itself. There's nothing fancy about it. Yes. I guess the point to note is we do have a pinhole. If you do see it, mark it as best you can. Write it on your retrieval tag so eventually it'll get fixed. We noticed that's why Brandon grabbed this one. It was marked that it had a hole. I'll get 20 bucks whoever jumped into this thing. Straight up. <laughs> 20 bucks. Come on. So, Mitch, you think you're going to do it? Are you going to take the plunge? I'll plunge, yeah. You guys want me to plunge? Plunge it. Yeah. I'll plunge. Harvey's crew may have missed the group lecture, but they didn't miss an annual ritual of setting up a porta tank. The rookie dip. One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready. Four, two, go! Oh, yeah! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Coming up... The plane that was trying to land the other day, I guess the gear was seen on the runway. Oh, oh, oh. Everyone get ready! One of the biggest changes in Sioux Lookout this year is the building itself. It's a brand new base with a brand new boss, Jack Welch. It's a tremendous improvement over what was here previously. The old facility was inefficient. It was a number of scattered buildings throughout and it was inefficient to operate like that. We've got a brand new base here in Sioux Lookout, and it's been a long time coming. Ever since I've been here, everyone's been talking about it, and finally it's been built. I much prefer this new building to the old building. Everything's much more streamlined this year, now that everything's contained. This building has brought everything together under one roof. We have a training room. We have our warehousing in here. We have our sector response officer room in here. We have meeting rooms in here, offices and it allows us to be much more efficient in delivery of the fire program. Apparently there's a deer running around inside the airport area, inside the fence, so I guess there's a hazard when, it, when a deer runs around in here because uh, a plane that was trying to land the other day, I guess the deer was seen on the runway. And the uh, airport officials or security asked us to see if we can uh, line up and basically push them out. So we'll take the bottom half. I'll take the field out there with the half gun and then we'll try and give her. Take that. Okay, if you guys see anything, just give me a show. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, usually when we're doing this, driving deers and stuff like that, usually you're the one banging pans or something. Otherwise, you're trying to sound as loud as you can to scare him, scare him, keep him ahead of you so he doesn't come in between us and then try to stay in a straight line. But you have to be the forest. <laughs> Going to the back trail, I saw him run by. On the fence. Oh, oh! Going towards the gate near the gas truck. He might be coming out here. Oh, oh! Right by the gate. Everyone get ready. Keep pushing. Oh, oh! We've got him in this section of bush and we're cutting off his exit. We're in a pretty good line here. We're all barking. Oh, oh! It's called dogging, so I guess that's where the term comes from. Right on. We got it. He's out. Absolutely. Mission accomplished. Thank you very much. Sweet. Now that the deer has left airport land, it can join up with all the millions of other deer that call Kenora, Ontario, home. One of the essential tools in fighting forest fires is the simple hose. Water! But it can get easily damaged on a fire. When hose fails, it can be very costly. In Pickle Lake, Mike Kaminawash and his crews are spending an afternoon cleaning and testing hose. So which one are you guys gonna run it through, these ones? Yep. All right. It was one year I came up from from home, 10.30 in the morning. As soon as I walked into the office, she got dispatched. So it was a three-man crew, I got dispatched, jumped into my chopper, and we flew south of here. I landed right away, and my three guys, we managed to get it. We only spent one night on that fire, and that's the one I found a big bear trap on. It was still open, and the trigger system has been rusted off and we just been walking inside our hose line, maybe just a foot or not even half a foot. So <laughs> after I broke that, broke that root and gave it a little nudge, it shut. My God, that would have been, that would have been hard to explain. Hmm. Need a medevac, somebody's stuck in a bear trap. That's one. Two. I'm looking for holes along them. Oh, they look good. They're all good, eh? Yeah. So green is good. Showing that it passed the test for three minutes at 300 PSI. These will get put aside for now, dried for packaging. Coming up over a, a smoke here. Okay, does it look like uh, it's going to give you any trouble? Yeah, I'm going to have to uh, pump it for sure. Just roll over to the helicopter and we'll keep going. Come on in. You're going to get all up close and personal. What's up, bud? Not too much, man. Having fun here? Oh, yeah, so much fun. Oh, right. getting any good cuddles in? You like that? Fun, eh? Yeah, lots of fun. When we do do sling today, the sling training will all be done um, off the belly. So directly, you'll be directly hooking up to the helicopter. Therefore, it will be sitting and hovering above you within six inches of your pan. In Kenora, a cloudy day is a great opportunity to work on some helicopter skills for the crews. You always give it a good little, a good push down to confirm that it's locked in place. So you just unhook it, and then we're gonna start to unroll it. Spread it out as far out as you can. So what do we put in first? Heaviest. Heaviest. Good. 
So where's my signal person? Behind me. Now as he's coming in, my partner, the guys behind me, are gonna be signaling to be hooked up. Once he's hovering, that hook, when it comes on, it's gonna come on and it's gonna sit there. You're gonna do this. And he'll release it and it'll lock into place. At no point should you ever, ever go underneath the skid. At least if you're coming straight out, you're under the belly of the machine and the skid gear will be able to make contact with the ground. Do you like that? Fun, eh? Yep, lots of fun. Okay guys, we're gonna go over the bucket. So you gotta be really, really careful as you take it out and just string it out properly. There is a front and a back to the mechanical component of it. This is the front, this is the back. Sounds very basic, but think of it this way. We're on the ideal site. Just moving this thing is, is a pain. The easier and the more meticulous you can be about doing this thing, right? Each and every time, the easier it gets, the less likelihood that something goes wrong. First bucket of water that he grabs, everything pops loose. Life is golden. That's what we're hoping for. As you pull the frame out, it snaps into place. So the easiest way is just to use your foot rather than trying to push on it. So you just kind of push it in and give it a kick. We do want you guys to be aware of how, how the uh, bucket operates. Now I want you guys to think of all of this under that machine. Sound good? Okay. Let's roll over to the helicopter and we'll keep going. So what we're gonna do is everybody can kind of get around uh, it right now. Ken's gonna crawl underneath. Uh, please somebody volunteer to go first so I don't have to pick anybody. Come on in. You're gonna get all up close and personal. Mr. Heaney. Some cuddle time? Yeah. Just a quick nap here. A little one-on-one time. So here's this one. So, yeah, little tab pull it. There you go. All right. Red Sky, you can stay under there and teach everybody. What's up, bud? Not too much, man. Having fun here? Oh, yeah, so much fun. Oh, getting right. any good cuddles in? Yeah. <laughs> what do we got going on here? Oh, it's way too hard, man. Oh, yeah. Right there. Okay, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay, you got it. And then you just put your finger on there, and then while you're pulling that, this will just come off, and then that's got to be pulled all the way back. So it will fall off right now? No. Your it... on it? Oh, I see. And then it'll just lock itself up. Okay. Back. Cool. All right. That looks pretty there. cool, eh? You can see right through Right to the top. All the mechanical stuff in there. Looks actually pretty sweet from right here. We just got a call in that there was a CO just up the lake, then his motor broke down, so we had to get in our fire boat and go give him a tow back. Thank you, sir. It just died on you, I guess? I or? turned it off here, yeah, and just tick, 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 tick. tick. Huh. Okay, that was happening Try to ours. boosting it. And yeah, no luck, eh? I believe he felt a little embarrassed, but I mean, that's no big deal. Just the other day, we ran out of gas and we had to come back on our kicker. So it could have just as easily been him picking us up and we help each other out. So it's no big deal. Morgan, can you update this row with the radio there? Just let them know that we got the boat and we got Trevor on our way back. Can you fire, fire it's giving you an update. We have the CO boat and we're on our way back. I know Trevor from working here in Sulacout on the MNR base. Uh, we share it with the conservation officers in the district office. So I've seen him around, talked to him, and he, I also saw him at the gym last night. <laughs> Coming up over a, a smoke here. Okay, does it look like uh, it's going to give you any trouble? Yeah, I'm going to have to pump it for sure. Every spring, Kenora District faces many grass fires, like this one Harvey's crew battled last year. This year, the district is trying something new. The purpose of the prescribed burn that we uh, did this spring in Wabisamang was to reduce the spring fire hazard associated with grassy fuels. 
adjacent to roadsides and swamps close to the community. Right here. We used uh, mainly the drip torch for the ignition this year and uh, crews got a really good chance. They really built up their experience levels, which is a kind of another side note to the success of the project. And then just strip straight to you? Our main concern would be for the fire to take off into the, uh, the forest adjacent to the grassy fields. What's the fire telling you right now about the wind? We were pretty uh, careful to make sure that we were only burning small chunks at a time. Manageable chunks to burn and make, making sure the project was a uh, success. We have suppression crews on standby as well. We have uh, an engine there, one of our fire trucks on standby. We also at the base here, we have our crews on uh, red alert. I think the, uh, the burn was well received within the community. We've heard lots of good feedback. The prescribed burn is a great tool for reducing spring fires. But summer is approaching, and Harvey and his crew know they'll need to be ready for when the flames get into the trees. Right now, I'm pretty hungry for a uh, lighting fire because, you know, my crew hasn't been on a fire yet.